Hey guys, Ryan here. No major video this week, but I got something in the pipeline that should be done next week. However, there's something I want to talk about today, but it's been a while since I've made one of these, and in that time, my channel is kind of like almost doubled. So for those of you new here, this is a journal update. The point of these is for me to make some lighter, more impromptu content more focused around discussion that I don't think would be fitting for the main series, but is still stuff I think is worth talking about. Anyways, back when I decided to do the Yoko Taro video, I naturally had to play through all of his games, which, lucky for me, wasn't too big of a deal. I'd already played Nier and Drakengard 1, and Nier Automata was already released and I was halfway through that, so I had a good head start. The one game of his, though, that I hadn't played through was, of course, Drakengard 3. And I won't lie, I was kind of skeptical going into it. If I'm being honest, while I like and respect Drakengard 1, it's a game that's more fun to talk and think about than it is to actually sit down and play most of the time. Dragon fights are fun, but the ground combat is frankly terrible. Plus the voice acting was kind of stilted and the whole thing felt like a low budget affair even by 2003 standards. To be clear, I do think Dragon Guard 1 is a good game, but I was definitely worried about its flaws infecting its sequel, especially based on how many critics talked about it as though it did. And well, as I'm sure you can tell based on the title of this video, it was not bad. In fact, it was pretty good. And if you're willing to overlook some major cracks in the veneer, you may actually think it's really goddamn great. Obviously, I fall into the latter camp. I love this game for a ton of reasons. And I'm here today to tell you why I think you should play Drakengard 3. First of all, there's a lot of fun to be had in the combat. There's a solid amount of depth in the moveset with pause combos, plus there's weapon switching which allows you to switch between swords, spears, gauntlets, and chakrams on the fly that let me pull off some stuff that just felt so satisfying. Plus it has a really nice and diverse enemy roster that even after 60 hours never got boring to fight against, and some pretty killer bosses. The combat isn't exceptionally deep, but it's more than a lot of games have been willing to provide in the past. This is no Devil May Cry or Bayonetta or anything, it lacks the strategy, complexity, or APM requirement to be anything like that. But I would say it's like a lighter God of War, or a more complex Dynasty Warriors, and by far had the best combat a Yoko team had put out to that date, although it's definitely outclassed now by Nier Automata. It's a great zone-out game, and as far as mindless button mashers go, I'd say it's pretty high up there. Likewise, the dragon combat is also pretty good, most of the time. There are these locked-in arena fights where you fly around in three dimensions, and those can get kind of weird and glitchy. It wasn't uncommon for me to do this aerial charge move, miss, and keep flying against the invisible wall just in perpetuity until the move ended. It doesn't cut off, you can't cancel it, you're just stuck in that animation, just rubbing your face against the wall. It's not fun, it's annoying, and I hate it. However, when it's trying to be a Star Fox clone, it's a lot of fun, if barely shallow, and is probably the way the dragon combat should have been used exclusively. The best part about those dragon segments though is they are almost always accompanied by some amazing music. I should also mention that Keiichi Okabe did the soundtrack of this game, and this is probably his most aggro OST. Lots of chugging metal guitars and glitchy pulsing electronics on here in addition to the usual angelic choirs and beautiful classical pieces. Like, listen to this! This is way closer to a Guilty Gear track than anything, and I love it. And to hear it while you're riding a dragon, it's pretty goddamn awesome. I really hope Okabe does more music like this in the future. It really shows just how diverse he can be and is the coolest shit. Unsurprisingly though, it's the writing that makes this truly great. It's so quintessentially Yoko. While it's plot about protagonist and demigod Zero wanting to murder her sister so that she can be the only demigod is solid and engaging with some interesting themes throughout, it's really the characters that made this game what it is for me. Every character here is so well-defined and likable, even the characters who aren't likable. Like, Zero's an asshole, but she's that special, kind of charismatic sort of asshole. If I had to compare her to anyone, I'd probably say Travis Touchdown. She's crass, vulgar, and quick to violence, but this stuff is almost always played for humor. Like, watch this. Where's three? She's in the forest shrine. Alright, where's the forest shrine? 
Oh. <laughs> if I were to hand over that information, you'd kill me on the spot. I'm not going to be making that mistake. I'm the Fairy King, remember? No one is more wise or clever or boundlessly intelligent than I. I'm not gonna kill you. I find that hard to believe. I, uh, promise? I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> what the? Shut up. We'll find it if we keep walking. Move it. I don't know about you, but I think that's hilarious, and is some insanely strong characterization. The game is filled with moments like these, so much so that I'd be tempted to call it a comedy if there weren't so many incredibly dark moments here. It's also worth noting that Zero isn't the only good character here. In fact, I'd honestly say all of the characters are really likable and interesting. From Zero's sisters, to their disciples, to everyone that gets any kind of major speaking line at all contributes something to the tone and quality of the game. I think the best example is your dragon, Mikhail. People like to talk about 9S or Emil being too pure for Yoko Taro's world, and yeah, no. Mikhail is literally too pure for Yoko Taro's world. You see, in spite of being a dragon, he is a legit little kid, and one of the best written children characters I have ever seen. He has this real air of naivete and innocence around him. He literally can't understand why anyone else would want to kill other people. The very idea of sex is completely alien to him. And he's so hyperactive and prone to screwing up that he feels just like a kid who's trying his best but has no goddamn clue what he's doing. And all of this is tied together by the fantastic voice acting of Cindy Robinson. Also, fun fact, this thing is voiced by the person who voices this, this, and this. Voice acting's a trip, man, let me tell you. Anyways, I don't want to make this seem like it's a lighthearted romp, because it really isn't. This is a game that deals with racism, rape, abuse, a ton of murder, and much, much more. I'm doing my best to avoid spoilers because I really think this is a story you should experience on your own, but that stuff is definitely there. It's just counterweighted by a fair share of levity, and it all comes together to make a game that is dark, but not overbearingly bleak. As ugly as this game can be, there's still a good amount of humanity to be found here. None of this is to say that the game is perfect though, because it's not. Like I said, combat is fun but decidedly shallow, the dragon combat is very hit or miss, and if you don't like vulgar humor or characters this is all going to come off as lazy to you. Like one of the first scenes is Zero scaring Mikhail so bad that he pisses himself. Like a dragon literally pisses himself on camera. I think that's hilarious, but if you think that's gross or immature, I wouldn't blame you for passing on this one. And it does get repetitive, no doubt. By the end of the game, you're going to find yourself grinding through the same three missions for money. I personally never found that repetition to be boring, but I'd be lying if I said it wasn't there. Most of all though, I think this might be the most poorly coded game I have ever played on a console that I still liked. There were moments where my game would come crashing down to, no joke, like 6 frames per second, and these moments were not entirely infrequent. What tends to cause them are massive particle effects like explosions and fireballs, which show up far less frequently as the game goes on, but man, those first couple levels had me legit scared that the game was going to crash. It's not as bad as something like Sonic Boom or anything, and it never caused me any real frustration, just kind of confusion, but it is far more dicey than it has any right to be. In short, I would highly recommend Dragon Guard 3 if A, you like any of Yoko Taro's games and their style of writing, B, you like weird offbeat games like No More Heroes, C, you like comedic but bleak character driven games, or D, you like Dynasty Warriors. I think this game is great, but it is not for everyone, even though I'd like to see everyone play it. And if you saw anything that piqued your interest at all, I say pick it up. Also if you're planning to buy it, try finding it at GameStop, literally half the price over Amazon. 
And I think that about covers it for today. For those of you who have played it, let me know what you thought of it. Given how new it is to me, I'd love to hear some opinions. Anyways, thanks for watching. All the best. I love you all. Peace.